I want to tell you the story of the day that Jesus denied he was God and the subsequent cover up. Now, this is not some kind of Da Vinci Code, Dan Brown conspiracy theory. Oh, no, this is based on really solid scholarship. I will look at some in a sec. So what is this story? Well, it's found in Mark chapter 10, Mark being our earliest gospel in the Christian Bible. The other gospel writers, Matthew and Luke, used Mark in the writing of their gospel. They amended it and added to it and so on as they saw fit. And our guide to the passage will be a chap called William Barclay. William Barclay wrote uh, this commentary on the gospel of Mark. And he was, amongst other things, an author, a radio and television presenter, Church of Scotland minister, and most importantly, for our purposes, Professor of Divinity and Biblical Criticism at the University of Glasgow. And he wrote this popular set of Bible commentaries on the New Testament, which has sold over one and a half million copies. And here is my copy of this book, The Gospel of Mark by William uh, Barclay, um, still very popular with Christians uh, around the world, actually. Now, his motto, Barclay's motto, was making the best biblical scholarship available to the average reader. And so that's why he wrote 17 commentaries on the New Testament published by St. Andrew's Press. And as I say, they're still very popular today. Now, he's very readable, actually, is why I like him and very accessible for the average layman and woman. So here's a story from Mark chapter 10, as told by Barclay. And I want to tell you what he says about it. And then we'll come to the cover up. So the story in the gospel goes, as Jesus was going along the road, a man came running to him and threw himself at his feet and asked him, Good teacher, what am I to do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? There is no one who is good except one, God. You know the commandments. You must not steal. You must not commit adultery. You must not, uh, you must bear false, you must not bear false witness. You must not defraud anyone. You must honor your father and mother. He said to him, teacher, I have kept all these from my youth. When Jesus looked at him, he loved him and he said to him, you still lack one thing. Go sell all that you have and give it to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. But he was grieved at this saying and he went away in sadness for he had many possessions. End quote. So that's the passage in Mark. Barclay quotes it in his commentary on the Gospel of Mark. And then Barclay says the following things very helpfully, I think. Here is one of the most vivid stories in the Gospels. One. We must note how the man came and how Jesus met him. He came running. He flung himself at Jesus' feet. There is something amazing in the sight of this rich, young aristocrat falling at the feet of the penniless prophet from Nazareth, who was on the way to being an outlaw. Good teacher, he began. And straight away, Jesus answered back, no flattery. Don't call me good. Keep that word for God. It looks almost as if Jesus was trying to pour cold water on that young enthusiasm. There's a lesson here, writes Barclay. It's clear that this man came to Jesus in a moment of overflowing emotion. It's also clear that Jesus exercised a personal fascination over him. Jesus did two things that every evangelist and every preacher and every teacher ought to remember and copy. First, he said, in effect, stop and think. Don't get carried away by your excitement. I don't want you swept to me by, mo by a moment of emotion. Think calmly what you are doing. Jesus was not cold shouldering the man. He was telling him, even at the very outset, to count the cost. Second, he said, in effect, you cannot become a Christian by devotion to me. You must look at God. Now, this is what this is how Barclay is summarizing what Jesus, in effect, was saying to the young man. I'll just repeat what Barclay wrote because it's so important. Jesus, in effect, said, you cannot become a Christian by devotion to me, to Jesus. You must look at God.